you'll see the countdown to when we start is going on in the chat window there. And you'll see that I'm really good at typing numbers. It's one of the strengths. I can even do it without peeking. My eyes are completely shut and I can type all of these numbers accurately. Not even peeking. The reason that we're starting talking about numbers is because we're actually going to be using a couple of them today. Inside the chat box, I'd like you to mark yourself down as being here by telling me your favorite number. So, for example, inside the chat box, you might see something that looks like this. I'll type out my bam. Did you know that? Did you know that? Eight. Besides being the cool binocular eyes, means infinity when you turn it sideways. Did you know that in math? So even though it's the number eight, it's kind of like the potential for everything. That would be my favorite number. All right, your chat box is open for you. Go ahead and tell me your favorite number. And then tell me why it's your favorite number. I have gotten two numbers from my first two hours that we're talking. Each student had selected the same number for the same reason. And I'm wondering if anyone's going to do. So far, I haven't seen that number appear yet. It was a popular number in my first and my second hours. Once you put down your number, you don't need to retype it. Oh, that's a good reason. Tracy, I like that. Brian, I'm suspicious that if I asked you your favorite number, you might tell me a different one in like 45 minutes from now. So I'm going to see. So no one's put down the one from earlier. I'm checking out your screen over this way. I see a lot of people are saying the same reason from earlier as to why they like their numbers. It's the birthday number. That's a big one. But no one's put down the same number yeah hello that's a very good reason fortune cookies do not lie all right has everyone had a chance to answer i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to close this up in a few moments you'll want to be able to be seen by the way i see some of you have their camera off i'm going to be selecting you for a moment based on a funny face I want to be able to be seen, so turn on the camera. Nice, nice, nice. Awesome. All right, I'm going to lock this down. Super cool. Can I have a volunteer to pop us off with our objection, objectives, objection, objectives today? Number one. And the way I'm going to do it, I was reading a cool pirate book last night. And the pirates were fighting a group of people. But our first face we're going to make is the face of a pirate. Can I have somebody, by making the best pirate face, I'm seeing a couple of good scary ones over there. Can I have a pirate face person make my number one? Sloan, I see it. Can you please read my number one for me, please? So you can unmute yourself, Sloan, and you can read our number one. Okay, so number one is read the instruction slides, slides one to five. <laughs> so our instructions are on these slides. Awesome. Another pirate out there for number two? Lily, can I hear you read number two? And if you'd like to, Lily, you can read it in your best pirate voice. Arr, view the dwellings and complete the question slides 10, 16, and 22. Arr. Arr. Hey, Lily, what's a pirate's favorite letter? Arr. You think so, but it's the C. Now, I was going to get you with whatever you said. If you had said C, I would have said R. And if you had said R, I would have said C. You can't, I'm unpredictable. Loose cannon over here. A number three. Can I have another pirate for a number three? 
Brick, do you mind doing my number three? I wasn't sure if you were making a fire one. Ella, would you like to? You can do it in a pirate voice or a non-pirate voice for number three, please. Finish Mr. Kevin's sentences 24. Mm -hmm. And number four, do we have somebody for a number four? Brian, your best pirate voice. Can you do a number four for me, please? I feel like you're going to have a really good pirate voice. Am I obligated to? Yes. Since you asked, yes. Shoot. <laughs> I don't feel like saying it in a pirate voice. You don't have to if you don't want to. Bro, but uh, number four, draw and upload your dwelling at 27. Nice. Boom. This part in blue tells you the slides where you'll find those specific assignments. Today's lesson is actually going to be based off of this presentation. You're going to get a copy of this in your Google Classroom in a few minutes once we're done going through all of it. And then you'll be able to modify these slides and you'll put your answers right on here on slides 10, 16, 22, for example. And then you'll send that right back to me. So we'll be using the slides both to get our information as well as to put down our answers. Now, in my book, the pirates were fighting knights. It was a pretty cool book. Can I have someone with a best night face read our objectives for today? Now, you do not have to do both if you don't want to. If you want to, you can. And if you don't want to, you don't need to. You can stop after one. A best night face. Ella, would you like to read one or two? I'll read one. All right. I will be able to observe differences amongst three types of Native American dwellings. Super awesome. Thank you, Ella. Can I have a volunteer to do our second one? Using a good, Casey, I see a good night face. Would you like to do our second one, please? Oh, you ran away. Anybody else want to take over for Casey? Sloan? Um, I will be able to compare my observations about the Native American dwellings to other information about the dwellings. Thank you. Thanks to everybody who was reading. That was awesome and really good voices too. Your goal is to inform me about those three dwellings. And we're going to be doing that by observing our differences. We're going to look at three dwellings in depth from what we did yesterday. Yesterday we went through and we looked at about 12 different dwellings. Today we're going to look in depth at the Teepee, the Hogan, and the Pueblo Adobe. Those are the three that we're going to really look at. What you are going to do today is you're going to use this slideshow to record your notes and your observations on these dwellings. You're going to examine them in detail. Take a moment and spot the unspottable. Have you ever done those pictures where there's two pictures next to each other and then you have to try to find what's changed between the two pictures? Who's good at that by head nods over there? Some of you are really good at it. I'm, I'm not the best at it. It takes me a little bit, but my sister's really good at it. She can always figure out those differences super duper quick. You do not have to follow my list if you don't want to. Here are some ideas for what you can be looking at when you're making your observations. You could look at what they use to make their home. We kind of have a little bit of a head start because we looked at this yesterday too. You can also question why that specific style was made. Remember yesterday that we looked on our scavenger hunt and we found where the houses were? in the United States, that last line, you could think about like, why would that house be common in the Southwest part of the United States? And the last observation you can choose to make if you'd like, is what you might imagine life to be like in that home. These are ideas. 
They are not required for you to answer these three. The next part of your slideshow is broken up into our three houses, the TP, and then there's some pictures of the house, and then you get to this slide. Here's where you're going to be taking your notes. On your copy of this slideshow, you'll just type your answer right here based on what you observe for those houses. And you go to the next one, and it will bring you through. I'm going to fast forward all the way down to the last part of writing. And you're going to help me to fix these sentences. Since the Adobe and the Hogan are similar because, well, you know why they're similar, because you just did an observation activity, checking them out. The TP and the Adobe are different because, well, you'll also know because you just finished checking them out. You can write your answer right on the slide here. You don't have to do five sentences. This one, we're just going to do one finished sentence on each of these. Now we're getting to the drawing. Can I have somebody help me with one through three? We're going to do one through three all together. Can I have a one through three? I'm looking. And can I have Tristan do my one through three? Design a pre-Columbian home for a climate, use ideas from the houses you've observed, and think about what is needed to be comfortable here in Minnesota. Nice. Yesterday, if you recall, that we looked at the pre-Columbian, before Columbus. So when we're designing a pre-Columbian home, it's probably not going to have concrete. We're going about 500 years into the past. And some of the items that we build houses with today weren't around. 500 years ago. You have that whole document from yesterday telling you what, uh, what uh, houses were built of, what they have in them. So you might be checking out that Google form and saying, you know, this longhouse was built with a wooden plank. I'll probably be able to use a wooden plank to build my house. Can I have a volunteer for four and five? Jacob, can I have a, you read my four and five, please? Take a picture of your dwelling and upload it to Google Classroom. Number five, use the resources in Google Classroom to assist you. Oh, and you said take a picture so brilliantly, Jacob. You got me a little bit nervous because I thought the last time I took a picture was last week when we practiced taking a picture of our workspace. I might have forgotten how to do it. That's no problem. We can click this, which brings us to our resource tab, and it gives us our whole second document if we've forgotten how to use and upload a picture. This will help you. We did good practice on it last week by uploading a picture of our workspace, and that's why we practiced it, because now we're getting to the assignment where we'll be able to use it. Thank you, Tristan and Jacob. Here, it takes a moment to load. Here you'll see my example. For my pre-Columbian house, I kind of drew out what I think would be a very good fit for Minnesota, and then I labeled a few things to help. Minnesota does get a little bit chilly, so I think we could do like a birch bark rolled chimney for heat. I kind of made a slanted roof so that the snow can fall off because you get snow here, and I thought maybe in Minnesota you'd want to make a house that can withstand some of that snow. Here's some branches to help hold up animal hides covering those branches. And then I made a long entryway because I know that one of the problems is when heat leaves your house. Have you ever come in from maybe ice skating or sledding, and then all of a sudden you hear from the other room, like, make sure you shut the door? My parents always yelled, make sure you shut the door because all the heat was escaping. And me and my brother and sister would be running in. And Paige, who was always a little bit slower because she was four years younger than us, she'd be like kind of waddling her way in her snowsuit on the deck, slipping and falling over because little kids are hard to walk on the snow. And then my brother and I would be in the room and all of a sudden just make sure you shut the door. So I think 
maybe if we made a long door, that would help keep some of that heat in. I saw some of you nodding your head. You've, you've heard that before. And the last slide is where you can add your image to the slide. So you'll just put that right back on using those skills we practiced last week, and you'll upload it and send it back to me. All right, I'm going to stop this portion because we are good with our directions. I'm going to answer some questions for you, but we'll just upload this little segment for students who weren't able to join us today. This is their instructions. We'll stop that.